question and answer depart for the broadcasting program an interview with anita luz by paul s gaultier from the wireless age nineteen twenty two volume ten this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard an interview with anita luz by paul s gaultier few of the twenty five hundred or more daily newspapers in the united states are without question and answer departments. These at first catered to the lovesick youth. Either he was heartbroken because she did not smile and show her teeth, or it was she who had a quarrel after the barn dance and thought of writing to the all-knowing Mrs. Beeswax to secure advice on making up. Then there was a change in the type of such departments. The papers commenced to give their readers more genuine information on every conceivable subject ask a question and enclose a stamp they shouted gloriously in the printed columns and you'll get an answer how old is chauncey depew what makes the movies move when is the next eclipse of the sun and now there arises to ask why this splendid feature of the dailies cannot be incorporated in the broadcasting programs a young woman whose name is or ought to be familiar to most of the thirty or forty millions of movie patrons of the country. She is Miss Anita Luz, who, with her husband, Mr. John Emerson, writes scenarios. Miss Luz, or Mrs. Emerson, unquestionably is the highest paid woman writing original stories for the silent drama. Some newspaper correspondent at one time printed a story stating that the talented couple make a million dollars a year out of their writing, but that was only a flight of fancy. The reason I mention the tale is to impress, in a forcible way, the fact that Miss Luce is at the top of her profession, and for that reason a suggestion from her is to be listened to attentively. Not alone is the motion picture audience acquainted with Miss Luce, the radio public also is for she has talked over the air, giving a lengthy and instructive discussion on the art of writing movie scenarios. I met Miss Luce in her apartment at the Savoy Hotel in New York City, while she was stopping there immediately after her return from Europe, where she had been during the summer. The topic of conversation, of course, turned to radio, and how it may, or will, be used in connection with motion pictures. It would seem to me, she said, as she curled up in a huge plush chair, that its most valuable function now would be to educate the public further in the inside workings of the motion picture industry. You have no idea of the thousands of men, women, and even boys and girls who want to get into the movies, not as actors and actresses alone, but as directors, writers, and in a score of other ways. In the course of our work, Mr. Emerson's and mine, we have been asked repeatedly to speak before colleges, clubs, high schools, and public gatherings. We always do our utmost to accommodate, and only recently we spoke at a college up in New England. Now, our experience repeats itself in each case. Those in the audience are filled to the brim with questions they want answered. We have had thousands of such questions hurled at us, and I can say that these thousands are only as many variations of but twenty basic questions. Yes, I am quite safe in saying that I could prepare a list of twenty questions and cover all the thousands of queries that have been asked us. Strange to say, the question most asked is, should the manuscript be typewritten? The second is, is it necessary that it be written in scenario form? That is to say, in technical scene-by-scene -scene style. And the third one is, how much will I get for it if it is accepted? We are speaking of radio now, and the answers to those questions are unimportant. But to satisfy any curious readers, I will say that the answer to the first is yes, to the second, no and the third depends on how badly it is wanted by the company and what it is worth to them. Because we know what our audience want, we always start off such a meeting by asking for questions to be written on a piece of paper. 
These are collected, and the audience is thoroughly satisfied in merely getting answers. It is the old story of the inborn curiosity of people. Radio could be used to satisfy this craving. Each broadcasting station could advertise that, on such and such a day, Doug Fairbanks or Mary Pickford or William S. Hart will answer any questions on a given subject that have been sent to the station by a certain time. In other words, the radio public to send questions, the speaker to answer. Not only on the movies, but on other subjects as well. One week, the station could have an expert on short story writing answer questions, the next on salesmanship, and so on indefinitely. The speaker would say something like this, Jim Brown wants to know, etc., etc., etc. I would say that, etc., etc., etc. Miss Lewes added that she could see no way radio could be made to serve the movies in the making or exhibiting, but that the future development of radio alone could decide that. Miss Lewes has been associated with the movies for more than ten years, despite her youth. She started to write when fifteen years old, and, as she says, was fortunate enough to have her first story accepted. This encouraged her, and despite the fact that many rejections followed, it made her stick to the thing she liked. Her first picture was a very short film called Her New York Hat, and old-time movie fans will still remember it. Mary Pickford acted in it, and so did other stars of today. The scenario writer was born and educated in California. And listen, she went on the stage at the mature age of four years. She was carried on. Her father was a theatrical manager and a newspaper man, and her entire life has been woven about the stage and the movies. She quit acting to write for the pictures, and when she really got underway in the profession, she had an average of three scenarios accepted each month. Her first regular job was with D.W. Griffith, on the Pacific Coast. Griffith sent for her after she had been selling him plots for two years. The next time you see a picture, Constance Talmadge, look for the name of Anita Luce, for most of the Constance Talmadge films are written by the dainty writer and her husband. End of Question and Answer Department for the Broadcasting Program An Interview with Anita Luce by Paul S. Gaultier.